Hey, what's up folks? Here's a little review of the Gradkit ABS like Risen. I was kinda intrigued by this company. I had seen their products several times on Amazon, but there was very few comments or review on them. So I decided to give them a chance. Then I buy their ABS like Risen. When I received the box, I <laughs> immediately noticed the traditional made in China label that is usually found on my AliExpress product. You can lie that this label doesn't look the same. But hey, let's not judge too quickly. Other than that, the branding is very sleek and way more modern than other competitors. Inside the box, there's a pair of nitrile gloves provided, which is good. I'll chew a simple pair of gloves won't get you very far. On the side of the bottle, texture has been added to ensure a good grip, reducing the chance of creating a mess. Like every resin, good mixing is required before use. Just the feeling that this resin provides when I shake it told me that it has a high viscosity and we can even hear it. For the opening, we can see that Gradkit has thought of everything. A steel breaker has been added to the cap and I was very happy to see this because I don't know if I'm the only one but God that I hate opening this bottle with such type of seal. And especially when it comes to resin. Alright, let's create the resin to improve its fluidity and uh, how to follow the instruction of the manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. We can see on the bottle that Gradkit recommend an ambient temperature between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius and an exposure time between 2.5 and 3.5 seconds. And when you look at the technical data sheet, it recommend an ambient temperature between 20 and 40 Celsius, an exposure time between 4 and 5.5 seconds. So this is where I got a bit confused. On the TSD, the technical data sheet, it recommends even at the minimum a higher exposure time than what is recommended on the bottle. So, hmm, okay, let's run some uh, exposure tests and see how it goes. Oh yeah, this resin is definitely thicker than what I'm used to. Before printing, my resin was around 25 or 26 degrees Celsius and I would have liked it to be even hotter to increase its fluidity. The more viscous the resin is, the more chance that the first layer will not adhere to the build plate. Especially when we have a print with large crash section. If we return quickly to the technical datasheet, it's even clearly indicated that the preheating will increase the chance of printing success. I'm also excited to use my brand new Hello Mage printer from Creality, so I'm totally in the unknown what the exposure time might look like. During the first exposure test, I used the setting as the technical datasheet provided 25 seconds for the base layer and 4 seconds for the normal exposure. I immediately noticed that the addition to the build plate was very weak. Even after leaving the impression dripping for a few hours, I noticed that there was still a good amount of resin on the print. With resin with such a high viscosity, there's gonna be more resin that's gonna be wasted during the process treatment. As it's a black resin, I always find that it's harder to find the perfect exposure time. I start at 4 seconds and after I bump it to 4.5, and at 4.5 I was way overexposed. But just to confirm, I decided to bring along the count of calibration and I find that I was, yeah, way too much over overexposed. So I set back my exposure time to 3 seconds and there was a call missing on the success side. So two more exposure tests after, it seems that 3.2 seconds would be the best bet. Here's a quick view of my final setting. A layer height of 50 microns, a base exposure of 45 seconds, and a normal exposure of 3.2 seconds. I always tend to put a higher rising height that it would be necessary, but when you come to print big thing, it can save you some trouble. And finally, I would have liked to increase my uh, rising speed to 1.5 mm per second, but with this this slicer, you cannot put decimal in the rising height, motor speed, and light of delay. 
As ABS lag is known to be more flexible, I decide to run a little experience of bending three pieces of 100 mm long and 2.5 mm thick. The first one is a standard resin and it snaps just after a little bend. The second one is the e-resin PLA from Eason and show a good bending capacity of almost 180 degrees. And finally, here's the grad kit ABS like. It takes easily four good bend before breaking, which is pretty good. All right, it's funny time of printing something. Here's a model of, from Loot Studio that I scale up to 150% At the first view this print came out very well I have cleaned the model in my homemade wash station that I have designed out of a low blender It's doing a very really good job Gratiot recommend using a ultrasonic cleaner but for this model it was a little too big to throw it in mine and obviously, it's not everybody that got one. Once curing and dry, this print came out really good. And this ABS like resin can really retain the detail pretty well. And yes, before you ask, it's normal that she got a missing arm. Let's try printing some minis to see how well this resin can perform in small print. And without any doubt, the result came out really good. Small details are sharp and crisp, but I'm still discovering this new printer so my anti-aliasing setting and anti-blur might not be optimal. And if I would have even got a better result, I could have reduced my layer height to 25 or 20 microns. Supports are easily removable and doesn't leave too many scars mark. Our support are more flexible, they may not snap or detach from the model as a standard resin, so I like to use a plier on fragile areas such as N and weapons on such minis. Gratiot may be relatively new in the 3D printing industry, but overall, I'm impressed. From the design to the project, it seems a very good company and they definitely worth being known. This resin will do a fantastic job from miniature to functional prints with even a decent price point. So that's it and I hope you like this video. See you, bye bye.